Hello, Facebook and YouTube. We are back again. I'm Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here twice a week, Tim, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Talk about golf carts, answer people's questions uh, that we've collected throughout the week. See if we can help people out, see if we can save them some money. Uh, let's see here. If you, you know, if you like this content, if you do join me every, every week or whenever you can on Tuesday and Thursday, like and subscribe. That helps. Uh, also, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube or Facebook, if you've got another favorite platform, you can follow us anywhere. I'm, I'm running the, all the social media links right now where you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, wherever, whatever your favorite platform is. I'll run those again later. Let's see here. We're going to have some regular questions. We may interact with some uh, live questions. If people are in the live watching, if you have a question, you're, feel free to ask it. If you want to just say, what's up, Tim? Tell me where you're at. Tell me your location. Right now, it's uh, where I'm at, it's sleeting outside right now. I, if, so if you hear some noise, it's actually sleet hitting the, the side of the wall. So we're in a winter, winter storm warning right now. But We'll see if we can get through it without losing any internet or, or anything like that. Right now, everything's good. Okay, let's see. We're going to get started with the regular questions. Uh, the garage is now open. Question number one. I have a 48-volt EasyGo golf cart that has been running wonderfully until a few months ago. Now it barely goes 18 holes. I charge it after each round. The charging light flashes normally when I plug it in, but the next morning the fault light is on solid and the other two lights are flashing. Overnight it will charge fairly well, but if left for several days without use, the batteries seem to lose charge. Is this a charger problem? Well, there's, there's a few things you could do. You, you're, because of the fault light, your charger is obviously not completing the charge cycle. Okay, now that could be from a, a couple of different reasons. That could be from you have a battery issue that's causing the charger to not to, to complete the charge cycle, or that charger is, is messed up and it's not completing the charge cycle. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to eliminate the charger as being the issue. Like you gotta you need to try that charger on another cart and see if it does the same thing. You know, another 48 volt easy go. Uh, I could it would help me if I had some bulk meter readings off of your batteries while the charger's running because you should be getting up to around 60 volts before that charger shuts off. And I have a feeling it's probably not. You might have a battery issue that's keeping that charger from being able to complete the charge cycle. And the completion of the charge cycle would be up around 60 volts before it decides to, to complete. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to eliminate that as being the problem. So the easiest thing to do would be charge, try your charger on another cart. Then we could focus back on your batteries if your charger turns out to be okay. Let's see. Ricky Smith. What's up, Ricky Smith? Hi, Tim. Greetings from Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you for being here to help. Well, thank you, Ricky. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming into the chat. Thank you for participating. Let's see. We're going to go to number two. Here in just a second, I get my bearings right. Number two, I have a 94 Medalist. My spindles have a huge bolt down the center. What do I need? And you included a picture, I see. Well, on a 94 Medalist, that is correct. That huge bolt you're talking about there, that's called the kingpin. And in, in 94, that. The, the spindle had a different type of kingpin than, than the other years. It was a big, huge bolt. It took up all those space. Uh, but that's that's the kingpin bolt. So if you if you need that part, that's what you need to look up is a kingpin bolt. Number three. I have a 91 DS golf cart. It will move in reverse, but not forward. I believe it's the forward and reverse switch. How can I verify that is the issue? 91 DS. It very well could be the issue. Could be your forward and reverse switch uh, on a 91. Because 91 is going to have a mechanical forward and reverse switch. Uh, you, can, you, you can't see the back side. You actually need to see the back side of it to, to, 
to you know get verification on that and you you also have micro switches there that you can test you need to test the micro switches on that forward and reverse switch for continuity make sure that they're working correctly just on and off continuity would be good but then if that if that turns out to be okay then you actually need to remove the forward and reverse switch assembly I think it's three screws on the outside of the cart that will actually allow you to remove it from the wall, the inside wall, and look at the back side, and you'll, you'll be able to see the bus bars. And you very well could have a, a bus bar that is completely burned up, because I've seen that before. All right. Number four. I just hooked up my new light bar. LGT 109 LF on my EasyGo Medalist. Wow, it's bright. It was a nice plug and play setup. I have, I have one question. On both sides of the light bar, there are two extra wires. Both wires are gray with red connectors. On each side, there is a male and female connector. Uh, I don't have the particular light bar in front of me, but th this is what my, my guess, since everything is working fine, you know, how you, how you got it. I know that that light bar comes in two different versions. It comes in a basic kit, and then it comes in a full street legal kit. Well, in the full street legal kit, you may have a dimmer switch, and that may be where the dimmer hooks up to that light bar in order to, to so you have brights and dims. I wouldn't doubt it if yours, the way yours is hooked up now, is that it's always on bright. You know, but I'm not sure, but that, that's what I would think the extra wires are for, considering that that light bar has the blinkers internal, so they, they must be just for the dimmer switch. Let's see here. Everything's looking good. Questions are good. Connection's good. Let's see. Uh, number five is where we're at. 2012 club car precedent. When headlight bulb replaced and switch pulled, the new bulbs blow. This happened after replacing the batteries. Turn signals, brake lights, etc., all work whether the switch is on or off. What could be the issue? Now, it sounds like you could have two issues. If the, if the tail lights and all that stuff is working, whether the switch is on or off, then you, then you have a bad switch because that switch is supposed to be breaking the circuit for the entire setup. That whole setup is running off the same power source, which should be 12 volts. Now, if your headlights are blowing when you open the switch, then that tells me the switch is working. You know, it's, but it, you got a short somewhere else or... Another red flag in what you told me is that you just had a battery job. Now that 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 kind of is a red flag because that means lots of wires were disconnected and new batteries were put in and lots of wires had to be reconnected. I would be concerned that maybe one wire got out of place and now your headlights may be getting way too much voltage and that's why the bulbs are blowing. So uh, I actually remember talking to this person earlier this week on the phone and we discussed that and he was going to go back to the place that did the battery job and, and have them take a look and see if they may have misplaced a wire or something because his bulbs were blowing uh, in, the, in the front. So that would be what I would be leaning toward on that area. It, anytime someone does a battery job, you just have to be real careful. I know I've said it as a tip several times. It, it takes a lot of good pictures. Everyone's got a camera now, so just it's really easy to pull out your phone and take some good pictures before you start just disconnecting wires thinking it's going to be real simple. It is fairly simple, but you do need a diagram in order to fall back on, and a picture is, is a good diagram. Let's see, number six. My 48 volt charger hums when hooked up, but the gauge continues to show zero, even though I have confirmed that the batteries are not fully charged. As soon as I hook up another charger, it begins to hum and the gauge advances to 15. Any idea of a solution? Well, let me, let me tell you what I have seen. Uh, it's, it's, that's similar to your situation. I have seen on 48 volt, club car chargers, I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about club car chargers. You plug it in, 
you hear it click because it starts humming. Needle stays on zero, and then eventually the circuit breaker will pop on the charger. All right. If that's what's happening and it never advances over to 15, then it's most likely the diode slash rectifier in the charger. All, all transformer type chargers have diodes inside of them. And when the diodes blow or they, they completely stop working correctly, you, you get a whole lot of weird stuff depending on what the charger is. Well, on a 48 volt club car charger with an OBC, if your car has an onboard computer, that's what will happen when the diode slash rectifier blows is that it will stay on zero, it will hum, and if you let it sit there long enough in that position, the circuit breaker will pop on the charger. So if that's what you're doing, if that's what kind of car you have, then, then uh, I would be leaning toward that. If it's just an easy go charger or easy go 48 volt car that we're talking about and your charger's doing that, it's not called the diode slash rectifier, it's gonna be called the diode, you know, so it's still in the same, same ballpark as what I'm talking about. Let's see. Number seven. I have an EasyGo RXV electric cart and installed four new Trojan Deep Cycle 12 volt batteries a year ago. I have noticed a faster than normal drain on these batteries from when they were brand new. Can you suggest? where I would start to troubleshoot this issue. I have maintained the water level during the course of the year. The batteries look fine from the outside. Any advice would be appreciated. Okay, my, my first question would be, how are you determining that there is a faster drain on the batteries than there was a year ago? Uh, how are you determining that? Are you going by uh, looking at a dash mounted uh, volt uh, energy gauge that is dropping faster than normal. Uh, if you are, I would, I would recommend not paying so much attention to that. I would recommend getting a handheld voltmeter and actually letting the gauge drop some and then taking some individual battery readings. Now, also, you, your car sounds like a good candidate since your batteries are only one year old. Sounds like a real good candidate to go ahead and pay for a, a proper discharge test at a golf, at a golf cart shop. Uh, I've talked about discharge machines before. A discharge machine is the opposite of a golf cart charger. And they, they, at a golf cart shop, they'll hook it to your, your battery pack, your whole battery pack, not just one battery, your whole battery pack. And it will discharge your battery pack all at once, all the batteries at once. And depending on how long it takes, there's a, there's a timer that goes off when they start the test, depending on how long it takes in order for your battery voltage to drop down to an unsafe condition, they can give you a very good idea. It's the most accurate way to give you a good idea of the condition of your battery pack as a whole. Now you could have one battery that's way worse than the others. Uh, and at one year old, if your battery pack is only one year old, it, uh, it'd be a good time to I mean, you would be a candidate for just replacing that one battery. Well, during that discharge test, if that's the case, they can find that battery also if it's, it's a weak battery. So if you don't want to go through the trouble of trying to figure it out yourself, which would be doing a load test like I've talked about on each battery while you climb a hill when the, when the golf cart's at its weakest point, if you don't want to go through the trouble of doing that, the voltmeter load test, then take it to a golf cart shop and they can do the discharge test. And uh, they should be able to help you out because... Uh, in one year, you shouldn't even notice any difference in, you know, in range of your golf cart. I'm going to be on number eight here in a minute. Craig on YouTube. What's up, Craig? Good afternoon. I have two separate questions. One, what is the little unused hook bracket behind my right front wheel? 2009 RXV. Two, do I have an aluminum or steel frame? Well, let me answer number two first. Uh, you've got a steel frame on an, on an RXV. It's not aluminum. Club Car is the only one that I'm, uh, well, of the three major brands, Easy Go, Club Car, and Yamaha, it's, uh, it's gonna be, uh, Club Car is the only one that's gonna have aluminum. Now the unused hook bracket behind my right front wheel, unused hook bracket, Hmm. I don't know exactly, but I can tell you what it could be. 
what you could be talking about. On a golf course, a lot of times they you got one guy that needs to move a whole bunch of cars at one time. And uh, that could be for that tow device. So the, the front wheels stay, you know, they, they hook up, they hook golf cars together in a, in a, like a train. They hook them together like a train on, on, a, on a golf course sometimes. And then one person can move 10 golf cars by pulling the train with one golf car, can move them all to a certain location, you know, or, and get, get all of them out there at the same time. So what you're talking about could be a mounting point for that, because a, a lot of people don't realize that, that all golf cars have some type of mounting point in the front. If you look, look at an easy go, there's a little, like a TXT, there's a little, there's a hole, there's an eyelet on the front axle. Club car, there's an island on the front axle. That's for that mounting device that you can pull the golf cars around at the course in the train. So I wouldn't doubt it if that's what you're talking about. That could have something to do with that. Let's see. Okay. Where are we at? Number eight. Club car. Cart runs jerky at slow speeds, a club car. What could be the problem with it? Well, depending on what year that you're talking about, uh, and if we're talking about gas or electric, so I need to know that because you didn't tell me that. So let's we'll go over both. If a gas car is jerky at low speeds, it is most likely that the, the governor may not be quite set correctly because uh, the governor is responsible for limiting your car speed, but a lot of times when people try to adjust the governor, they, they go too far and it ends up affecting the low speed drivability of the car. So that could be it if it's a gas car. If it's an electric car, depending on what year it is, it's gonna be whatever type of potentiometer that you have. Like uh, if it's before 2000, you're gonna have V-glides. If it's after 2000, it's gonna be M-cores. They are the device that's responsible for the smoothness of your acceleration and the, the you know, straightforward non-jerkiness of your takeoff and the acceleration as you, as you, you know, ramp up in RPMs. So it's going to be one of those. Let's see. Ricky Smith says, do these lead acid batteries hold a memory? The answer to that is no, they do not. They do not have a memory. They're not like, uh, they're not like, you know, I think I talked about this before. Uh, they're not like the old batteries like we used to have when, when uh, cordless phones and all that stuff used to have NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium batteries. And a lot of times it was better, it was good for the batteries to let them drain completely and then recharge it fully and it would kind of help recondition the battery. Got deep cycle golf cart batteries are not like that. They want to be fully charged. They like being fully charged all the time. They'll last longer then uh, they'll keep the plates desulfated. If you let them get too low in voltage, they, they, you know, the plates will sulfate and you'll lose a little bit of performance. So they, if you're keeping, up, keeping them charged is the best way to keep the plates from getting, desulf, uh, from getting sulfated. So no, they don't have a memory. Let's see. Craig says it sort of arcs from behind the wheel assembly. I was thinking steering dampener. All my buddies notice it, kick it, and ask, what is that? Thanks, Tim. Well, look, look into, next time you're at, you ever go to a golf course, Craig, see if you can, uh, you know, especially if you see carts hooked together. See if that thing is used when carts are hooked together. William Rizzo, hello from the Florida Keys. Hello, William Rizzo. Did I talk to you before, William? I think I told you I got married in the Florida Keys. Was that you that I talked to, or was that someone else? I talked to a lot of people in Florida. Uh, how's it going, William? Thanks for, thank you for being here and thank you for commenting. Let's see, number nine. We have a 2021 EasyGo Lithium Cart. The distributor said that the reason that the cart isn't as stable is that the lithium batteries are so light that there isn't enough weight at the center of the cart. We have considered a storage tray under the seat where we could add weights. Do you have any suggestions? The, the distributor told you that the, because the lithiums are so light that there's not enough weight in the center of the cart. 
So is this, did this cart come from the factory as a lithium cart or was it a lead acid cart that got converted to be a, to be a lithium cart would be my, would be my question. Now, if you feel that you end up, that you need to end up having to add weight, then I guess go ahead and do it. But that sort of defeats the purpose of, of having a lithium cart. One of the, one of the advantages of a lithium cart is that it's so much lighter that your cart has better performance and you get better range because of it. You're carrying around less weight. If you add weight to the lithium cart, then I don't, you, you know, you're, you're losing two of the advantages right there of, of going lithium in the first place. So uh, maybe I would think of, I would ask you questions about your tire setup, your, whether it's lifted or not. I would need to know some about that before I started uh, dabbling into why it might be not as stable. Uh, William Rizzo says, yes, sir, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that was, it might be you. I, I don't remember everything, but I do have a pretty good memory. And ask my wife. She'll verify that. Okay. Number. Let me check Facebook before I go to number 10. Make sure we're good there. No, we're good. Number 10. This is the last scheduled question. So if anybody in the live has any more questions, try to get them in. This is going to be, we're getting close to the end here. Okay. Number 10. I'm trying to figure out how much power I'm going to lose on a 48 volt golf cart motor with a system of 40 volts and charging at 42 volts, 38 amps. Okay. Let me stay on the page here. I'm not going to switch back to the camera quite yet. Let's see. All right. None of that is going to work. Okay. Uh, the, the, cause first of all, are we talking about a series golf cart versus a shunt wound golf cart would be my question. We're talking about a series golf cart motor or a shunt wound golf cart motor or SEPX separately excited motor. Which one are we talking about there? Uh, if it's series, then the golf cart motor would work on 40 volts. Uh, but and it would be slower. It would be quite a bit slower, uh, believe it or not. It'd be quite a bit slower and quite a bit less power. But your charging thing that you're talking about, if you have a 40 volt system, you're not going to charge it at 42 volts. That's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. You'll never get a full charge if you charge it at 42 volts. You, you're, you're going to need a, a 40 volt charger, which should, which should go up to approximately 50 volts, which would, would be what it would go up to toward the end of the charge cycle. So I've got all kinds of questions about this question. So if uh, I think uh, it got brought up today at work, someone pointed this question out and I told them to have you set up an appointment, a GHOD appointment with me. So if you're interested in sitting, setting up that appointment, that would be a good question where I could talk to you so I could get more information. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, click the link in the description that will take you to the scheduling page and uh, you can set up an appointment with me because I've, I've got more questions than answers for you right now. And uh, I'd like to talk to you and get some of my questions answered so I can help you. Let's see. All right. Remember, like I said earlier, the, uh, you don't have to follow us on just Facebook and YouTube. You can follow us on any social media platform you like. There's the links right there. They're running right now. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, uh, all of them. So if you if you have a favorite, I am there. I'm, I'm everywhere. All right. Also, coupon code is still active. So if you would like to get a coupon, here it is. Get 5% off any parts you order from golfcartgarage.com. Use coupon code TIM7 at checkout. This code expires on February 10th, 2023. So you still got plenty of time to use that coupon code. Tim7. All right. I'm going to give uh, today's tip or this, this episode's tip. Now, I think I've already said it during this broadcast, but uh, this, this, episode, this episode's tip is what I said earlier everybody's got a camera now everybody's got a camera with them on their phone 
So before you do any type of work, especially a battery job, because when you're, you got to understand there's enough amps involved in a bat, golf cart battery pack. There's enough amps involved there to weld with. You can literally weld. You drop a wrench in the wrong place and it can weld that wrench to the side of the golf cart. That's how much power is in there. And it's enough to hurt you. It is. It's enough to hurt you. Uh, so the tip is to please take pictures before you start disconnecting any wires, even if it's, it's, even if it's something not even battery related. Take good pictures before you start disconnecting any wires. You'll be thankful in the end. That's, that's the tip for this episode. All right. I want to thank everybody. Oh, Craig says swag. Thanks for saying that, Craig. That's correct. <laughs> Got to remind them every week about the swag. Uh, it was brought up last week because uh, one of the other people last week brought it up, and you brought it up this week. So keep doing that. Let's see. Take oh, good good point, William. Good point. I have. I don't know if you noticed or not. You see my ring? It's rubber. I have a rubber ring. I have a real, I have a real wedding ring too, but I, I quit wearing it years ago because of working on a, around batteries and stuff uh, that you could weld a wrench to your ring and your ring to the side of the cart and then you're going to get burned and it's good, it could really mess you up. So I take off rings and watches. I don't wear any jewelry when I'm working on a golf cart. And I just got in the habit of wearing the rubber ring just because I'm always working on something. So rings are dangerous for them. For a man who works on, or a woman who works on mechanical things, rings are very dangerous. If you can lose your fingers. Let's see. That looks like we're going to bring it to a close. This was Tuesday, January 31st. This was episode 91. I will be back Thursday. Remember, Tim, Tuesday, Thursday. And like I said, if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you, you can either speak with me here live every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. You can either speak with me then, or you can set up a phone call with me through the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer. So there's, there's two different ways that you can talk with me if you feel like you need to. You can either talk with me live, and I'll do my best to try to answer your question here live every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock noon Central Standard Time. Or you can click the link in the description. It will take you to the scheduling page to look at available time slots and fill out the little info and give me your phone number and I'll call you at that time slot. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming again. I really appreciate y'all. I will see everybody Thursday. The garage is now closed.